The Razer Blade Pro 17, the long-awaited upgrade to the Razer Blade Pro lineup, is finally here. And along with it, it's kind of kept in line with all of the other new Razer Blade products in that it has one really cool feature that I think we all appreciate. It's upgradable. What I mean by that is that you can buy the Razer Blade Pro 17 from Razer in the one RAM and SSD configuration they now only sell their laptops in, and then, should you feel the urge, you can easily upgrade the RAM or upgrade the SSD to increase the performance or storage. Now, regardless of whether you want to max it out or just save a little money by installing your own RAM or SSD or maybe just upgrading these things as you need them, I figured really quick, just like I did before with the Razer Blade 15, I would do a video on exactly how to install a new SSD and RAM on the Razer Blade Pro 17. So first up, the Razer Blade Pro 17 has two SSD slots. One is populated with a 512 gig SSD and the other one is empty. So it's a lot easier, obviously, if you just want to upgrade the empty one and not touch the pre-installed one. But I'm gonna go through both. Really quick, here's what you'll need if you're only going to upgrade the RAM, which is much easier, and that one SSD slot. And then afterwards, I'll go into what you need if you're trying to upgrade both of those SSD slots to get the most storage you possibly could. Now, first up, you need a Razer Blade Pro 17. Duh. But if for some reason you haven't, there's a link below on the cheapest place I could find that. Then, to remove the bottom of the laptop, we're gonna need a T5 screwdriver. You can also check out the link below for that. A Phillips screwdriver, which you probably already have, but it actually is included as well in that T5 screwdriver kit that I just linked to in case you don't. Now for RAM, we have two memory slots for the RAM, so we need two modules to equal the total that we want. So for example, I'm gonna give this laptop 32 gigs of RAM. The maximum is actually 64 gigs. So I bought two 16 gig modules and I'll leave that link below. I'll also leave a link to where you can get the 64 gigs of RAM and a good deal on that as well. Now for the SSD, we need at least one M.2 PCIe NVMe SSD. There are two slots, like I mentioned. So I'm gonna install a one terabyte SSD in the empty slot first in this video, which when combined with the 512 that's already in there, we get a total of 1.5 terabytes. Now the one I bought is this super affordable one here that I will link below. You can also get a two terabyte affordable one from Intel here, also at the link below. And you can buy two of those to get the four terabytes in total if you want, by the way. But if you want a more name brand model, there's the go-to that everybody uses that is super fast, which is the Samsung 970 SSD Evo, which I will link below as well. Lots of options. Now, if you are planning to upgrade both SSD slots, you will also need one more thing, which is this. And it is a free SSD cloning tool. Now, you'll only need this, again, if you plan to replace that pre-installed 512 gigs, but we're gonna use this to copy everything on that, including Windows, onto your new SSD that we'll then replace it with. This way, we don't have to worry about backups and all this other crazy stuff and losing our Windows and all that other fun stuff. It just makes it a lot easier. First up, let's start with the easy one. Let's replace the RAM. So we're gonna turn off the computer, flip it over. And by the way, it's a good idea to put something soft under it just so you don't scratch the lid. Um, paper towels are fine. Unscrew the 12 T5 screws that are holding the metal plate on the bottom in place and set them aside. I like to set them right next to the holes that they came out of just so I keep track of them all and I know which ones go where. Then using your fingers, you can pry up the bottom plate until it clicks off and set that aside. Then you will see two RAM slots. They each have two metal brackets on each side. So we're going to slide those two metal brackets away from the RAM, so like to the sides of the laptop in other words, and that will pop up the RAM. When it does, you can slide that out. Do the same with the other RAM module and just set those aside. Now, we can put our new RAM in the same slots at an angle and then just click them down and they will eventually just kind of lock into place. Now, if you aren't gonna upgrade the SSD, you can just put the metal plate back on, screw it back in place, turn on the computer, and basically you're all set. If you are upgrading the RAM and the SSD at the same time, then I recommend just leaving this open and we'll move on to the SSD. Okay, and if you skipped that RAM section because you just care about the SSD, really quick, what you're gonna need to do is turn off the computer, flip it over, put something underneath it, paper towels work, just to make sure you don't scratch the lid. We're gonna unscrew those 12 hex screws holding the metal plate in and set them aside. Then using your fingers, pry off that metal plate. If you were on the RAM section and you stopped there, then you're already at this point. Now, you should see the one empty M.2 SSD slot. We're going to unscrew the screw that is just sitting there and not actually holding anything in. Put our new SSD in that slot. Make sure that it clicks in and locks down by putting the screw back in to hold it in place. Then we can put the metal bottom of the laptop back on and screw that back into place. And then we're gonna turn on our computer. At this point, we're going to 
see if we can find the hard drive in our disk manager. You can type repartition hard drive into the Windows search box at the bottom left of your screen and then click that option and it'll open disk manager. Now you should see the original disk zero, that is your original SSD, but now there's also a new disk one. It might have a different number, but it'll be something like that. And it should immediately prompt you to initialize this new drive, which you should just follow the steps to do. Once that's done, you can right click anywhere on the unallocated space of the new drive and select format. Then just follow the prompts to format it the way you want. Eventually it'll show it as formatted and you're all set. Now, if you wanna upgrade not just the empty slot that we just did, but you wanna also upgrade the current slot that the pre-installed SSD is sitting in, here's how we'll do that. Now the first steps are the same. Turn off the computer, flip it over, unscrew the 12 hex screws that are holding the metal plate in and set them aside. And then using your fingers, pry off that bottom plate and set it aside as well. Now, if you didn't already do the steps above, there is one empty M.2 SSD slot. You can unscrew the screw there, put in your new SSD in that slot and then screw it back down. Now we're gonna put the metal bottom of the laptop back on. I know it seems weird that we're not touching the other SSD, but bear with me. Then we're gonna screw that in place, turn the computer on and make sure that we can see it in the disk manager by typing in repartition hard drive into the Windows search box at the bottom left of the screen and then clicking that first option to open disk manager. Now in this case, we will initialize it because it's gonna ask us to do that and then that's fine, go through that, but do not format it. Leave it as unallocated. Now here's where it gets a little different. We're gonna clone that 512 gig drive onto the new SSD in the second slot so that we don't lose anything. To do that, we'll use that free cloning software that we downloaded earlier. Once you download it, install it and open it. And then in the program, you're gonna click on clone system on the left and it'll ask you to select a destination drive. We're gonna select the new SSD that should be empty, select advanced options at the bottom and select optimize for SSD and then click start. This will take a while. Took me about 45 minutes, but your mileage may vary. Now, once it says that's done, we can turn off the laptop, then open the laptop back up as we have multiple times now at this point. And then using the Phillips screwdriver, we're gonna remove both SSDs this time. The one that is new that we just put in, remove that. And then our pre-installed one, remove that as well. Now we're gonna take the new SSD that we just cloned everything onto and put it in the original slot, the one that the pre-installed SSD was in before, and then screw that down. Then we're gonna take our second new SSD that I assume you bought if you wanted to do this to both SSD slots and put that in the now empty slot two that the other one was just in and screw that into place. You can now put the metal bottom of the laptop back on, screw it back into place, and we're gonna turn on the computer. It should boot up just like it always does because we have a cloned everything now on that new SSD and even though our pre-installed SSD is now sitting on the side. Now we're gonna open Disk Manager again by typing into that search box to repartition hard drives and clicking the first option to get to that. And now you should see the cloned hard drive as Disk Zero or Equivalent and our even newer hard drive in Disk One. That new hard drive will probably ask you to initialize it like it has for all these other ones. Do that. And then, just like we did before, we only installed one SSD, we're gonna right click on that unallocated new disk and select format, and then follow the prompts to format it. And there you go. At the end of that, you should have both SSDs installed and should have everything you originally did on your pre-installed one. Now don't forget to sell the old RAM and the old SSD. Um, they're worth some money and you might as well not just hold on to them and let them sit in a drawer because that's just a waste. But I hope that worked out for you guys. Let me know in the comments below. Um, also, the link that I'm gonna leave below is to my site where all of the links are. It's just easier for me to like organize everything there and keep it up to date. So head over there and talk to me in those comments as well. It notifies me when I get those comments on the website. It doesn't necessarily do so here on YouTube. So just keep that in mind. But I hope this worked out for you guys. Let me know if it did. If it didn't, thumbs up the video if you liked it. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you want more tips, tricks, and other tech news. And don't forget to ding the bell next to the word subscribe and select all notifications just so you actually get notified when I do new videos because YouTube doesn't seem to notify anybody about anything anymore. As always though, regardless, thanks for watching.